All righty. So I wanted us to review some of the action items that we had, um, namely probe something. Do you want me to present or are you all okay opening up this pull request? I it would be helpful um, for me if you present because I'm on a phone. Okay, let me let me see how we're going to see it from this. I've got all this I installed stuff. Wayland and now there's a bunch of adverse effects. Including Zoom just crashing. I actually really like the way that you did this, Francis. For some reason, I haven't checked your issue. <laughs> All right, which, uh, what are you looking at? Um, tracking the work. Yeah, uh, you and Dave and I should get together. Probably to set up a one-off call. He's out today. Maybe next week we can grab a half hour just to kind of chat about ideas. Can't we just use GitHub issues and then GitHub projects? Organize it all that way? Uh, we could if the all the section leaders agree to do that. You're on mute, sir. There's too few people to not have open forum. <laughs> Got to click the button. Francis, sir. I got the angry crossed off mic next to your name. Brr, not going to talk. It's grayed out. What? Ugh. Get out of here. Hold on. Uh, let's see if I can. Oh, there you go. Does it work? Yeah. You, you, re you restored his speaking privileges. <laughs> <sighs> Zoom. So yeah, sorry. I was saying that I truly and like uh, deeply hate GitHub projects, but if the momentum of the other leads is towards using it, I will uh, I will keep my opinions to myself. I think uh, far and away you are the most advanced user of uh, GitHub I've, that we have of the uh, leads. So if you come up with a reasonable proposal, I don't think anyone would argue. Um, but I don't. I, I, I'm pretty sure Art isn't going to learn how to do a project, and uh, Dave might. What's the What's the latest on getting like a program manager hired for for this? For this, or for just in general? <laughs> I um, at this point. Uh, not taken any action on yet. I'm going to okay. put that as part of each of the two SIGs in like each section one that we should hire a program manager to run this program. Mm -hmm. So we would so need that. That'll be, I, I, I would, I would argue, thing. wouldn't that be kind of a pro, a problem one thing? Cause I, let me explain my thinking. If they're going to define the problem that CERT is going to handle, we've talked about tracking the progress on that problem and reporting our findings on that problem. I guess that's not like all the project manager, but I'd say that's a fair amount of tracking that they would have to do with what they're defining the problem as. If we're interested in creating like an emergency request for hiring, that's something we could do. Otherwise, I'm going to bake a... Uh, project program manager into the plan to 
take care of the administrivia of the program as it rolls forward. So, so we could go about it backwards to make it work for us right now, which is, Crobe, you're the poor little sod who has to report to the TAC about, and they turn to you and they're like, say, what was going on with the Vaughn thing? And then you have to go, here's what happens. Mm -hmm. Here's what's happening, here where we're blocked, here where we're succeeding, and so on. What format do you prefer this information to be so that you can then present it comfortably and well? If we can, if we understand what it is that you're looking for, as far as like update formats and all that, we can work from that into whatever prog like project tracking tool we need. Um, right now, there is no official way of doing it. Uh, historically, once a quarter, I create a PowerPoint or a Google mm -hmm. slide to uh, present the whole working group. And now the SIG has their own slide and I am uh, cherry picking the most exciting updates from all of these section meeting notes. So it's, it's manual, it's not burdensome, but we're not to the point yet where we need to have you know, like a Gantt chart and estimates yet. Yeah, because that's, that's quite a bit of overhead, especially for the size we have. Yeah. Um, I, I like the right, idea gonna... of keeping it all on GitHub because then you can interlink issues if we're working with other projects on GitHub. Correct. So we did follow an issue about this. Um, I'm going to write down, let's try GitHub projects. At least it's fully open. We don't need anything else, the same space. Um, I'd also say it's innocent. I'm with you, Francis, that I'm not GitHub projects biggest fan, but it's easy to onboard people. We use it a lot in homebrew. Okay. If do you like the homebrew situation? I, I actually think it works pretty well for like the 70 some odd people that we are that make up the homebrew team. Um, so I actually think that it it works pretty well because of the whole the way that PRs get linked and everything. I know Linus is really against the way that it all functions, but like, I mean, I'll be honest. I, and, and also mind you that homebrew is a GitHub project, like home, like GitHub puts the money up for homebrew. So there's that too. So we do a lot of GitHub magic that like a lot of people don't know, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we do make it work. My, my advice here would be we can have whatever process we want. It should be as uh, minimally invasive and work inducing as possible because right now we're all volunteers and uh, it's up to us to maintain it. And I'm already seeing some spots where we've had some volunteers uh, not able to follow through on what they've committed to. So I just don't wanna get us in a spot where we have a lot of extra just kind of administrative but, but, work. But Crow, also if it's on GitHub, I can automate because I know GitHub Actions very, very well. I'm building a lot of tools for mm -hmm. open SSF on GitHub Actions. So quick blocker on this, Crow, we need you to enable projects. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. Let's see if I have the power. Uh, oh, I would love to jump right in. We just want to have swim lanes right now, Francis, with all the streams and kind of what's in each stream, because I can start putting the issues for uh, stream or the first stream, which is what I'm in charge of. So you can put issues in there in like the issue, which is just a flat space. I think we right. can manage with that. Um, and, that and then we can backlink them into projects. Okay. I can make a project, but it kicked me up to the top level of the foundation to do that. Under OSSF? Yeah. Yeah, so that's normal. Like it's a flat space around the top level org. And that's why I hate projects, but anyways, uh, I think we should just start populating it and like people- will Yeah, I think we can start. Like, you want yeah. a, a Kanban board? Yeah, exactly. That's what projects is. It's like a bunch of swim lanes. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. I would like to title my project, please. Cool. Let's 
So okay. there are already. See. Oh, can you fellas get to that? Yep. So, which one is it? Pa? It's in the Zoom. I love Kanban boards. I cannot see it. No, that's what this was. No? Yep. I need to sign in. Uh, I don't have enough access. So that's one of the things we should be wary of, right? Like closed access to that kind of tracking. Danger zone. Only organization owners can change project visibility. Manage access. The other option is we just use issues that then fan out into sub blocking issues. Like I'm comfortable managing because our projects are not that huge. It's very, very manageable like that. I do love the idea of doing a, you know, kind of a Kanban Trello -y board though. It's very visual. It's easy to see status of stuff, move things around. I can, I can figure out how we have it set up on homebrew because ours, if you go to homebrew, I think it's public. Let me check. Get I, and I can send a note to the foundation people to um. So this is the homebrew uh, project I'm presenting, and uh, Randall. I'm sorry to say, but it's the same view for me. Okay. Okay. I think we yeah because we use. Okay. So what's happening is, yeah, you need either admin access or something needs to happen on the org configs. Yeah, I, I can poke, the, if we want to use this, I can poke the foundation people and they probably would get it done today or Monday. Have a look, at least, I mean, it won't hurt to enable it. Okay, I will send them a note. Cool. So it would really help, I think, with the project management. Yes. All right. So that was your one item. What else would you like to talk about, Francis? Uh, that's the only thing we had on the follow ups. The other thing I wanted to look at was definitely the discussion. So uh, I filed, like I'm, st I'm trying to use the discussion forums uh, on GitHub again to just stay within the same tool. Um, I went ahead and wrote down a few of the like, you know, classic players in the field. Uh, Simplify, which seems to be taking some traction. There is a community edition, which is free, but it's definitely more of a theme. Th that's what like Scovetta presented to us, right? Was it? I think that's what didn't mean that when he came to present to us that he thought it'd be a great idea for us to own. That's that's OS assimilation. Oh, assimilation. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even add it. Um, but honestly, like if you look, like you know, I put Sir Vince here, but at Pager Duty, the classics, uh, CrowdSec, which was also like some kind of a free version of something, but now has fees with services. That's CrowdStrike. Uh, that was how CrowdStrike got founded. CrowdSec? Yeah, I think so. That was CrowdStrike. I, there some, there, there's some relationship there. Okay. And Emily just added Redmine, which I've never used, but it seems to be like a project management. So that might actually be close to what we want. Because again, like depending, and this is one of the blockers that we have, right? Which is what services will we offer as a, like as a function? And if we do plan on doing monitoring of sorts and uh, like active monitoring for vulnerabilities and then engaging actively with like projects, uh, this is gonna be a different need than yep. if we are just purely as a service to help coordinating on vulnerabilities. Yep. Um, if it's only the latter, I would strongly recommend either Bugzilla, I think, thank you, Crow, for suggesting, or Certvins. So, What's the uh, workflow, if you don't mind me asking? There's also Jira. Well, well, 
I, I'm familiar with Bugzilla Crow because I do uh, a board in Gnome. So, I mean, I can build a workflow on Bugzilla, but Bugzilla also, it has issues getting updates. But Bugzilla is a tool that is used by uh, more traditional projects. Uh, it, it, it's an option depending on what we wanted to do. Agreed. But it's also and, a type of crap. Yeah. Just side note. <laughs> oh, I used Bugzilla for years. It was a sturdy, fine thing. It, it, well, our Gen 2 Bugzilla has gone out of control. Like, I have lost the ability of tracking issues. Like, because it's just, it's gotten so out of control. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Like, it, it might actually be interesting to also consider, like, do we want this tool to be an intake as well? Because if users can actually file requests, Bugzilla would allow that mm -hmm. versus uh, like things like Vince, which is purely administrator controlled for like creating and handling any kind of oh. tickets. I'd, I'd argue, depending on the workflow, we can work a lot within GitHub and GitHub Actions, just saying. Because they That's have correct. web hooks, they have all sorts of really cool stuff. Like if we get an issue, I can send a request through a webhook and open up an issue on GitHub and then it's publicly available for everyone. How would you describe GitHub Actions with respect to like a coordination tool in that sense? Uh, I, well, it's an automation tool. So it'll, it, because, and I also, I'm also thinking probe about our short staffness because a, a lot of people ask me how I get a lot of stuff done. It's because I automate a lot of it. <laughs> I'm a very big Apple script user. <laughs> so all I'm saying is that I can, that type of ideology can be achieved with GitHub actions and issues. And like, if, yeah, there's a lot of things that can be done there. So we, I, we can run checks like, yeah. And while you're typing, Francis, I, I will note that there's a large majority of vendors their P certs use uh, Jira. So that is an option that, is, that does have many use cases we could look at. And Atlanti Atlantisan, Atlantisan Aquaman is a premier member of the foundation and we potentially could talk with them about what they might be able to uh, provide us. I'm not a big Atlassian fan. Sorry. It's an option. I'm not, I'm not saying otherwise. And it does have a lot of ability to uh, extend it. Yeah. It's true. They do have web hooks, if I'm not mistaken, as well. And that's, again, a lot of, uh, a lot of the internal like, vendor development teams use it. I don't know its penetration like out in the community. There's some projects that use it. And then I would also suggest, like Vince, if we were, if we do want to do intake, that's potentially something that we could uh, work on extending Vince to do. You know, it, I think Vince is a a nice option for us if we can get developers to help uh, write front ends or write different uh, toolings or kind of just modify it. My, my thing with Jira, if I'm not mistaken, like, so, so I think Jira and Bugzilla sometimes have the same issue, which is sometimes the, the way that they go about tracking things makes it unclear to the end user. Well, and we, ha we have to determine uh, what's, why are we using this tool? If this is a tool for the cert to track our work, or is this a tool we want for ingestion or kind of uh, collaboration on issues. Uh, you know, we, we need to kind of decide what we want, what the purpose of the tool is and what we need it to do. Agreed, but I did note on GitHub that I think that, and also I guess on Jira to be fair, that I think that both of those platforms because of their web hooks can be kind of used for both because we can automate a lot. Yeah. And I think 
th this is a, a fine start of a list, but we, we really need to get some more uh, collaboration on this particular item because you know, the, the four of us that have put things in here, I'm sure there's other things that are. Uh, and that's the thing, like, I think it's fine to get this populated a little bit so that we can get like the conversation started. But this all ties really, really intimately with the offerings that we're willing to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm very comfortable if we just want to like write down a few examples here and wait for more progress on the other side of it to then actually go back to this and okay, review these, these ideas, decisions. Yeah. So if, if I you may, have other ideas, go ahead. If I may. So what I've been getting a lot of feedback on and my Gen 2 meeting never happened, Crow. They never uh -huh. got back to me, but I'm still, I'm still bugging people about it. But I've been talking to a lot of homebrew people and I actually started to make contact with Dibian and Arch and a few other distros um, for Alpha Omega. And I've been kind of talking to them about the same thing. And as far as from like a packaging and a packaging team, most of the packaging teams would like to see us more as a facilitator and as a communicator and kind of like in that stream. That's where most of these packagers see the problem is in coordination and in like maintenance and kind of like facilitation, if that makes sense. Because apparently like in packaging teams, a lot of problems are very known. It's just there are problems with politics. There's problems with opinions. A lot of problems with like, yeah. It, and it's usually the usual suspects that come up too, you know, which is interesting as well because some names have come up more than once and these are completely separate communities as far as who people have problems with. So you're talking like with respect to section one, like what it is, what is it that co that communities actually would like us to do? Yes, that's what I've been investigating. Okay. Okay. And they, that they seems would, to align. That yeah. seems to align with what we had in mind, kind of like speculating about it, right? So yeah. this is good news. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think they would they would like to see us less as like incident responders, more as hey like we found this problem there's this great group that will help facilitate with upstream and yeah because like i was talking to some of the guys that were doing the bottling and homebrew and there have been days that they have found two zero days in one day and they didn't really know what to do about it By building stuff, this yeah. was also on the mat on the M when the M1 launched, when everything changed. There was like a lot of problems they found, and it was kind of weird because we were getting a lot of feedback like, we don't have that hardware for so go screw yourselves. But it's like, but it's a legitimate problem, and like we have to offer it, and yeah. So, like, actually, if you could document all of these little examples, I think they would be like very telling. I will. I don't know. I, I, I assume you did already, but uh, like these, these are going to be really interesting stuff because it also raises a few questions for like the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if we do get an outreach from one of those groups from Homebrew and they're like, hey, we have this zero day on M1 hardware, which we don't have. Can you give us some? Like, is that something we can just be like, yeah, let's go buy one expensive. Or well, like, you, you know, you, something like so, so let me tell you a funny story real quick. Just very quick story. So when they launched the M1, they said something. They said that like all of the open source groups were already communicated and they were on board. No one had talked to Homebrew. And then we were like, what the hell? Like they even had our logo on there and everything. And we were like, what's going on? So we like gathered a group of people to go talk to Apple. And they were like, yeah, dude, we forgot to phone you. That my bad. And by the way, the development kits are $600 a piece. <laughs> yeah yeah that's the friendly price um yeah. <laughs> so but yeah like again like if we could document those little examples these might be like again sources of questions and things we might want to oh, at least and discuss that's something we probably could lean into the membership of is there a piece of hardware that somebody has in their test lab that could be leveraged by the community for the particular problem. So yeah, that's a, that, I think a definitely a valid request to cast. 
but uh, so yeah, back on this, back on section three for now, for closing for the last two minutes. Um, I don't think we have any further action items for the next two weeks because we're kind of pending a lot of the momentum on section one and two. Yep. I'm happy to hear Randall's already like interviewing folks. So um, do let I, us know. I, I, I would ask Randall, that. it would be useful to have multiple people on these calls just so we have um, one person to ask, one person to take notes. Um, it would be, and we're going to have coming with different perspectives and might be able to pick up different things as we're engaging these folks. So don't, don't get too far down the path without having others uh, be around. Yep, absolutely. I don't have a problem inviting people, you know that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually, I'll see if I could get Mike in, um, which would do, would, where like stream one is where I should invite him to so we can ask him there. Um, that's also another option is to, if, there if the team is agreeable invite them into the meeting yeah team one would be the, the spot for that cool we'll do so the one action item we have is for Krobe to look at enabling projects or if it's not already done try to share that love with uh, some more folks and i'm going to give it a shot creating some of the do projects we, where do we want that have. um fully public or just to uh the working group My initial I, take I, would be fully public. Agreed. Okay. So I'll see if I can, if they have the ability to uh, have it visible fully public, but then uh, kind of list the, the SIG members as ability to uh, edit. And if you, have, uh, if you have a good communication going on with them, ask them what their thoughts are about creating a new dedicated GitHub organization that may be able to like, very much close information, especially around incidents and vulnerability coordination. Like if we do have the GitHub issues, like as one potential tool to track vulnerabilities, this might be something we need, like to split off Agreed. and make sure that we don't overshare information by mistake. Yeah, I, I can talk about kind of what the, the realm of the possible would be around that. Kind I don't of like OSSF dash restricted or dash vuln or some not too explicit name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we could. Be, I'll ask. I don't. I don't know what our options are because either a the member is like donating the resources, or mm -hmm. you know uh, the foundation's paying for it. So I, I kind of had to see how that works out. Yeah, that's all part of the tooling investigation in my head yep cool. all right gents well, I, I have to I, go I, run to my uh, quarterly review that sounds fun uh i will talk to you all uh probably next week enjoy the weekend thank you thanks yeah thanks